friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be making a card using the A Very Sweet Sun Bunny stamp set by Rochelle Ann Miller for MFT. So I've stamped my images on some Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Premium White cardstock with Extreme Black Hybrid ink and I'll be coloring with my Copic markers. I'm starting with my deer and for her I pulled out E50 E51, E53, and E55, using that E55 first to lay in some shadows. I'm going to do a central light source on today's card, so basically my light will be coming from between my two critters, so I'm shading them in the directions they're facing with the shadows down their backs and the highlights on their faces. So the E55 is what I'm using to lay in that shadow for my deer and then blending that out with the E53. The E53 and the E55, I've mentioned this in a bunch of videos, they don't always play very nicely together. Um, lately I've been having more luck and I'm not sure if that's just because my markers are both full so they're nice and juicy and so they're just able to blend a little bit more. Um, so maybe if your markers are on the drier side and you're having issues that could be why. Once I'm done with that E53 I'm going to come in with the E51 and I'll fill in the majority of the rest of this little deer. I wanted to leave a, a white patch on the chest and on the belly. So I'm going to get lighter and lighter as I get to those areas. Um, but I'm just going to blend out the edge of that E53, doing those little scribbling motions to break up that pigment and get it nice and soft as I get toward those areas that I want to have highlighted. So once I'm ready for the next shade, I'll move on to the E50. So you could skip the E50 and just fill in with the E51 if you wanted to. Um, on these larger images, I often do like to use four shades because it just gives you uh, more dimension because there's so much more contrast between the dark and the light. So I'm going to come in with that colorless blender and smooth the transition to the white areas and then I'm going to bring in E41, E47, and E49 and I'll use those for her nose and her little hooves. So again, I'm just shading from the right side toward the left in keeping with the rest of the shading. I use the E49 first. And then I'm blending that out with the mid-tone, which is the E47. And then adding a little bit of that E44 for a highlight. I'm going to do a second layer off screen. I've been doing a few longer videos lately, so I wanted to try to add in a shorter one for those of you who prefer them and just kind of mix it up a little bit. So uh, this one will be a lot shorter than a few of the more recent videos that I've been posting. But I'm moving on to my bunny now with W00, W1, W3, and W5. I started with the W1 to kind of lay in some base color there, some shadows, and then I'm blending that out with the W00 and letting that fade into the white. And then I'm going to go right in to my W5 and start to add in some details. I'm going to give this little bunny some dark patches down her head and her back. And I'm also going to give her one darker ear. I'll give her a few little spots on her arms and feet. And then I'm going to blend that out with the W3. And I'm doing little dotting motions as well to kind of make it look a little more organic and not so drawn in. I want it to look as natural as possible. So I will also move in with the W1 and just uh, soften that into the rest of the body. And then once I finish with that, I'm going to let that dry for just a minute and then I'll come back in and do a bit more dot detail over top and uh, just add a bit more texture and also add a few more dots to the other ear. Then I'll bring in R11 and R20. I'm going to color the inside of the bunny's ear. I'm also going to give both of my critters some rosy cheeks 
and then color in the inside of the deer's ear. So I use the R21 first, and then I'm going in with the R11 and softening that up, make it look a little bit more natural. I'll use Y13 to color in the little daisy that the bunny is holding, and then I added a touch of Y15 to the center, and then I'll trim these out with their matching dies. The pattern papers that I'm using today are from the Bunnies and Bloom 6x8 collection, and I really wanted to try to use one of these bigger prints that I never use, um, so I thought maybe I could try to cut down this rainbow and use that as my background. And then I'm looking for some other prints. I really liked the B side of that as well with the little flowers and this pink with the tiny white kind of raindrop looking pattern. I thought that went really well with it. And then I was just flipping through and looking for another pattern that would go. And I ended up choosing this plaid print. And I think these go really, really well together. So you've got the plaid, you've got that kind of pink neutral tone, you've got the florals, and then you've also got the rainbow, which I'm going to die cut with the Lawn Fawn Large Cross Stitch Square Stackables. And I'm gonna offset that so that I just get it coming from the left hand side. I also cut a piece of Noble Fur cardstock with the Lawn Fawn Simple Stitch Hillside Borders to be my grass. And then I used the Lawn Fawn Large Stitch Rectangle Stackables to die cut the pink print. And I also ran it through on this floral and the plaid. And then on the bottom of the plaid, I used the stitch scallop borders. So I'll set all of those aside except for the Noble Fur Hillside. I'm going to use that to stamp my sentiment I'm using Versafine Onyx Black ink because this font is really fine and dainty and I want to make sure it's really nice and bold. I'm going to stamp that down a couple of times to make sure I got a good impression and just make sure that it is consistently as black as I can get it. And I use the one that says, I hope this brightens your day. And then I'm going to add my card base, which is a piece of Lawn Fawn sticky note cardstock that I've scored and folded to a standard A2 size card. I'm going to stamp on the inside in sunflower ink. And I'm using the sentiment that says, to a very sweet sun bunny, and then the little bunny image once again. I stamped that down a whole bunch of times because this ink does dry back a bit and I wanted that yellow to really stand out. Yellow can be a tricky color to stamp in. I've also die cut another piece of cardstock to mount this pattern paper onto just to make it a little more stable so that I can pop this up as my focal panel. So I adhered my rainbow print down to that and then I'll add my noble fur piece with the sentiment on it on the bottom and just line up all of that cross stitch detail. Then I'll set that aside and work on my card front. I'm gonna glue this pink print down first and make sure that that is lined up all the way to the edges on all four sides. Then I'll grab my plaid print and I'm going to adhere that down toward the bottom. I still want some of that pink print poking out from the bottom, so I'll just make that a little bit higher and then I'll take this floral print and I'm going to overlap the top of the plaid with that. So I'm just making sure that all of that stitching detail is a continuous line and you know doesn't kind of overlap anything. Then I've added some foam tape to the back of my focal panel. So I'm gonna peel off those release papers and get that kind of centered on the card and press that down into place when I have that on there straight. Then I'll bring in my images and I'm gonna start with the deer. I usually do like to start with the larger image first. So I'm going to add her over on the right hand side and just kind of make sure that her hooves don't cover up any part of the sentiment. So that little swirl on her ear will extend above the frame of the focal panel, but that's okay. And then I'll add the little bunny over on the left-hand side. 
And I really do like the way that rainbow looks in the background. It's something really different for me to use one of those bigger prints, but I think it did work in this case. So I'm going to add just the tiniest bit of Stardust Stickles. Um, just wanted to have the tiniest bit of bling on there. So I added it in the bunny and the deer's ears and then also to the center of the flower. So once that's done, I will pick it up to the camera so you can see all of the detail up close and get another look at the inside. I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. I think it turned out really sweet. So if you think so too, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. Ring that notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. I post new ones every Monday and Friday. If you're interested in any of the products I use, you'll find them listed and linked in the description bar below. And if you'd like to keep watching, here are two extra videos I thought you might also enjoy. You can click on either one to check them out. I hope you all have an absolutely amazing day. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.